Welcome to this foundational MSA yoga class. We're going to work foundational and familiarize ourselves with the strap work, bringing in our body into a nice sense of grounding and opening through the upper back. So let's start wrapping your strap around your mid thigh. Make sure you get a nice tight grip. So tucking in the end, right on the side of the thigh, not in the middle, that way you will stay. And nice and tight, so when you do move your legs further than hip width apart, you feel your muscles in your deep seat area working. Take an upright seat, lift your toes, fingers pointing back. Inhale, breath lengthen. Exhale, engage, move. So it's always that coordination. Inhale, exhale, engage, and move. Try to find, inhale breath, the length of your spine, and as you exhale, maintain that as you find your full exhalation. We go for 10. Inhale, exhale, and move. We are keeping your toes engaged, your feet engaged, your heart lifted, even as you resist, or especially as you resist, you wanna maintain that sense of length in your spine. Okay. Then hold your last one as you breathe and lengthen. And we're getting ready to come supine. So laying down, support yourself on your knee. And then place your knees above your hips, shins parallel to the ground, support your head. Inhale, breath. As you exhale, again, engage and lift your heart. So this time it's only your knees moving apart and your toes staying together. Inhale, exhale, resist, engage. Beautiful. Inhale, breath lengthen, exhale. Adding a little bit more ab work here as you find the length and the resistance. So every time you exhale, you start moving your knees apart. Yeah, that was five. Yeah, take your arms sideways, keep your spine long, inhale, and as you exhale, lower your legs to left side. Inhale, center, lower to the right. Add the resistance into the stretch as you do this to really maintain core engagement. And I have an active course where we want to, you know, fuel our spine here with the mobility of twisting. If you're feeling playful, you add the extension of your top leg to get a bit more leverage holding that with your abdominal muscles. Beautiful. And then coming back to center after your last one. Just hold your knees. Pause. Feel the length of your spine your pelvic alignment, and then place your feet for bridge pose. Inhale, lift your seat. Beautiful. And then exhale, extend your left leg in one straight line. And then moving back down. So the aim here is to keep your pelvis leveled. Inhale, breath up. Exhale, extend your right leg now. Inhale, center, and lower down. Again, moving to five, inhale, breath, lift your pelvis, exhale, seal the spine, extend the leg, center, and lower. So you wanna keep the level of your pelvis. As you inhale, exhale, lift one leg off the ground. This class is about pelvic stability. So we find the freedom to open through the thighs into the ground and find more space in the upper back. Moving into our last one. Inhale up, exhale, extend your right leg. Inhale, center, and lower. Very last one on your left. Level your pelvis, stay strong through your standing leg, and lower down. Beautiful. Now we repeat that leg abduction work after your 10, so five on each side, 
on the side, coming on your left side, adjust your pelvis and just to make sure we lift that lower waist, let's take the upper back, upper arm, I mean to say, over our heads. Inhale, breath, and then exhale, cactus arms as you open the knees, open that gate. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, open the knees, cactus arms. So keep that lift through your lower waist. So you have a bit of hollow space between the floor. Okay. Inhale, keep coordinating that breath. Exhale, engage, move. Switch sides, five on each side. Again, inhale, upper arm over the shoulders. Exhale, cactus arms as you open the knee. Inhale, breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, engage and resist. Keep working into the emptying of your breath, of your exhalation. Keeping a steady spine. Can we really move from an engaged breath where our spine is steady and it's only our hip joint moving? Coming onto your back, over the side, we're gonna come on all four. Keep the band where it is and find a quarter dog. So it's down dog with your knees on the ground. Keeping that engagement through your front body. Yeah, find that line from your hands, grounding into the earth through your elbows, shoulders, and hips. Adding one, two wrist pumps just to ensure that armpit lift through your front body. And then get ready to transition into your downward facing dog. Nice isometric engagement. Paddling through your feet, just arriving in the pose as you connect from your feet through your hands into the length of your spine. Getting ready to move into plank pose. Yeah. From the core of your midline, inhale, plank. Find your alignment against gravity in this beautiful weight bearing position. And then get ready to slowly exhale and lower down. So it's not a collapsing, lower down with an engagement, with support, just like the strap supports you to stay connected as well. Grounding through the tops of your feet and pelvis. Inhale for Cobra. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, lower down. We do that five times. Inhale, connecting to the breath. And inhale, gravity, empty your breath. Pressure on the abdomen. Maintain the length of your spine. Inhale. Ground through your feet, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, prolong the breath. Feel the breath. Last one, inhale breath. Length through the heart. And then add, looking over your right, over your left shoulder, exhale. Yeah. Now tuck your toes, use your knees to support your way back on all four. From the all four position, we're going to again find the positioning of our spine briefly through cacao, just move and then we'll add some resistance into the leg one more time. The aim is to keep your spine steady, inhale breath and as you exhale, lift your right leg to the side like you want to lift it, lower down, inhale, exhale, lift. So it's again the exhale, the engagement and prolong the movement five times. You want to have no, hardly any motion in your lower back. It's an isolated hip movement. Switch sides. Inhale, breath, neutral spine. Exhale, lift your left leg. Exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale. So collect your breath, collect your movement, and then coordinate that together. Wonderful. Walking from the all four position onto our knees just to move the strap up 
over the ring of the pelvis, which means I want you to have the strap nice and tight, wrapped over the sacrum and over the front pelvis bones. It's just there to remind ourselves of the alignment of the pelvis. Step your right leg forward, adjust your pelvis. Neutral pelvis, right left sitting bone in one line. Inhale, lift your left arm up and side stretch. Nice elongation through the front of your left hip as you ground your feet into the earth. Place your fingers on the ground and lift the back leg. One more time, adjust your hips. Level your hips. Hug your right hip slightly back, your front leg. Lengthen. And then from here, we transition into the third lunge, which is the high lunge. One more time, adjusting the hip, engaging through the inner thigh of your back leg, big toe mount. Inhale, lifting the arms up for high lunge. Transverse is engaged. Your lower belly hugs in. And then reach your arm as you extend your back leg, bending your front knee deeper. Beautiful. Steady feet, light in your heart. Moving into the 90-90, hands to the hips. Lower slowly down. And you're going to shorten your stance. So much so you have 90 degrees in both knees. From a level tip, inhale breath, exhale, lift up. So what we do, inhale, straighten both legs. And then exhale, slow down the movement as you lower down. What we want to do from a breath standpoint is inhale, lengthening the breath. And exhale, maintaining the length as we control the motion, lowering down. There's five times. You can add your arms, inhale, lifting the arms up. Exhale, arms to the pelvis as you lower down. Landing on your knees super gently. Good, make sure you keep hugging back your front hip as you land. For your last one, you will feel your thighs here for sure in your low lunge. Inhale, arms up, and then we do an open twist. From the length of your spine, yeah, use the back of your left hand to resist the outer front knee and then turn from your thoracic, yeah. The cervical spine just is a nice add-on. Wonderful. We're going to switch legs for the lunge series on the second leg. You can transition through your down dog or you add a vinyasa or your individualized transition of plank cobra or up dog we're very connected moment of truth left leg forward right knee down we start with the low lunge find the alignment in your hip and the strap is there for awareness to feel better the area of your lower back or pelvis in that point Tight stretch, opening through your psoas. Remember, the transverse is an antagonist to the psoas. So if that's engaged, there's more likely some lengthening happening through your psoas. Same for the big glute muscles. Keeping kind of a tucked positioning of your pelvis. Nice long breaths and in transition, fingers on the ground for the low lunge with the back knee lifted, adjust the pelvis and lengthen your spine as you find that elongation from the back heel through the entire spine. High lunge, yes, steady feet, steady foundation. Connect to that earth, lead your arms. Adjust your pelvis one more time so it's really subtle and then bend your front knee, extend your back leg and stretch your arms. Beautiful. Lift the heart as you extend through the feet into the ground. Getting ready for the hands to the pelvis, lowering the knees, adjusting the stance for the 90-90. Inhale, lift up as you know where you're going. You can reach your arms with you already. And then exhale, slowly lower down. So we learned that the exhalation, inhale, breath up. 
is really a way to control our core stability. And slowing down the movement, controlling the length versus the collapse. Yeah. If you feel your thighs here, it's a super effective way to eccentrically lengthen your psoas, which will be a necessity for the poses that will follow. Yeah. Working on five repetitions here. Going up for the last one, inhale, reach. This time at the stretch of extending the arms, extending the back, like lifting the heart, and then lower down. We're going into the twist. Resist the outer front knee on the back of the hand. Find the length and the twisting action. It's super active. Ground through your feet. Lengthening and twisting. And I'm coming back. For you down dog. And then hold this pose for five breaths as you find the positioning of your pelvis and low back bending the knees, lengthening the low back and lengthening the back of the heels. Breathing steady with the lift of the armpits, turning your biceps tendentially forward and your triceps back so there's nice space between your ears and arms. Inhale, move into plank, lower down. Now, for Ekapada Bikasana, extend your right arm forward, bend your left knee, look to the side, grab your foot, and then turn your body, belly button, towards the floor again. Option one is to hold your foot, hold them on the second side again. Option two is to wrap your fingers over top. Now, Collect the low back first before you extend your front up and lift up. So it's a strong thigh stretch and not the lower back compression. Make sure, keep lengthening the spine as you turn your body to the front of the room and then lower down. Let's see on the second side how you can adjust this pose. Lengthen your body first. This is like the aim to maintain that length. Bend your left knee, turn to the side, sorry, right knee, and then resist your inner foot to the midline. So your knee joint actually stays in the hinge. Right? You don't twist your lower shin away. And then here's a way to go, hugging your belly in front body and then extending the front arm up. Or you're moving into the full wrap, which is basically fingers over toes, turning the arm into an internal variation. Now this is a really nice option here because it gives you a nice sense of lengthening through the front shoulders. Keep grounding through the pelvis as you lift your heart. Beautiful. And then come back. You're getting ready for our peak pose. You know, lift your shoulders, hug your belly and move back with or without knees to downward dog. Kind of a brief counter pose so we can land on our knees for dynamic ustrasana, dynamic camel pose. Tuck your toes, right hands, fingers on the inner right heel, lift your left arm up. So moving into side stretch, grounding through the thighs and then lower your pelvis as you switch side. It's dynamic. So as you explore more freedom into the side body, you can start to back bend more supporting the back of the head potentially lifting the heart but for now it's most important you maintain that connection through from your lower body down and from your heart up away from lower back compression yeah support the lower back you're gonna do uh, as well a couple times right and left aiming for our five <laughs> and then come back into counter pose Uttanasana just walk your fingers back wrap your big toe inhale breath lengthen your spine bend your knees and then ground your heel down sitting bones in the air as you soften your heart and breathe grounding through the feet so the spine can find some length There's a pressing down action that will give you the freedom of length through the spine. 
And even though the pose is static, it's truly always dynamic in the heart. It never stands still. Coming back on our knees, we now take our right leg forward and have a block ready. Okay, so back into that beautiful open twist towards the front leg. You can either use the block or use the back heel. And if you're in fingertips, you'll get a bit more range of motion. And hugging your belly and leveling your pelvis, lean back. So it's an arching act of lengthening back and then counter pose. For this one, bend your back knee, lift your front toes, root your front hip back. Yeah, we're going to do it one more time. This is just warming up to it, giving the body some time to find the positioning. Yeah, lengthen through the low back. And then inhale, arch through the sides like a new strasana, and then you can start adding the hard lift here, supporting the back of the head. Press back as you lift your heart away from the ground, actively arching, lifting up. Or with the option of, if you're like, well, this is not happening for my low back, the option would be to side bend, level the pelvis, and take a side stretch, nice and long. You can always gaze down as an option. Oh, I'm giving you the modification <laughs> after the fact. Because if you prepare your body properly and you're not suffering from major, you know, shortened structures, everyone can access this pose. God. Level the pelvis, use the block to press away, lift the heart, side stretch, and then forward fold, counter pose one more time. Take it slow and easy, really stay connected to what you're feeling, to your body, and then adjust accordingly. And then second one, go into the side stretch of your wheel lunge, and then take the lift of your heart, supporting your head, go more into the arching, into the back bend direction. Wonderful. Again, use the breath. Inhale, let's lift, exhale, collect the belly. And then use the inhale again to find the lift. Or your sweet option of a side stretch. It also feels really good. Finding the length into the lateral body. Again, forward fold, bending the back knee. And we're going to come into a plank. Just giving the body the waist, the core, some nice tone back into Varshishtasana. Feet together. Stack your left foot on top. Right hand is slightly in front of the shoulders. And extend your left arm up. Hold and breathe. Keep the lift, steady breath. Remember, the strap is there to remind you where you position meaning your pelvis over where your pelvis is in relation to space. Switching sides. You're doing great. Just following, staying connected. You can always stop the video as well. If I'm getting ahead of you. Side stretch and come back. Bending the knee, step or jump, Uttanasana. And we're going to come to our seated position. Now, <clears throat> starting with dynamic bridge, we're going to lower down and take the strap now just over your ankles. It's there as a hook, as an anchor. And then loop in. I like to loop in through my wrist because it gives a sense of traction and then I just wrap it around my wrist. Support your way as you come down. Feet underneath the back of the knees. Shoulders back. And in ground through your feet, inhale, lift your pelvis. Bridge pulse. Shoulders back and lower down. And we're gonna repeat. If you have to adjust, adjust. You want to feel a strong sense of anchoring through your feet. 
So make it nice, tight grip. Yes, inhale, lifting the heart, grounding the feet. And exhale, lower down. Ground through feet first, foundation first. Then move and lengthen with your breath. Be working on five repetition. And show your way here. Inhale, pelvis up. Finding a sense of broadening through the heart. Maybe moving the arms a little further away from the midline. For more opening in the chest and then lower down. So what I want you to feel clearly is that pushing away from your feet as a preparation for Urdhva Dhanurasana. And then settle yourself for a moment, just moving your hips in line with your knees or knees above the hips, maybe adjusting the pelvis, but really keeping that neutral spine, grounding the thigh bones deep into the socket. Uh, place the block sideways between your ankles. This is just a safety measure for a full wheel pose. And we're going to do this one without the strap. So the feet stay steady and you're pushing away from the feet. So, robot arms, lift the pelvis, lift the heart. Place the hands above your shoulders and plug in your shoulders deeply into the socket so your heart expands lift to the top of your head plug in one more time use your feet and then inhale lift all the way up wheel pose god you're moving away you're pressing away from your feet breathe as you expand through your chest no compression in the low back otherwise please adjust into the previous pose breathe for at least five breaths before you lower back down and here we see ground your thighs hold your hand on the upper thighs and then press them down no flat back just natural curve in your low back breathe and feel optional you bring your left hand to your heart and ground through the sensation of your breath And how we say, alle guten Dinge sind zwei, right? We're going to do a second set. Place your hands, lift your pelvis, plug in your shoulders, ground through the feet. Remember, you have to block between your feet and then lift your heart. Breathe. Extend the arms, moving the heart towards or above the wrists more and more. It's a very demanding pose for our wrists. So there is options to this, which I'm not giving in this class. So if you're suffering from any of it, just adjust, please, into the previous pose. Ground your thighs and lower down and rest. Breathe and settle your body into the earth. Anchoring your system, anchoring your connection to source and then let's move into our seated poses move over the sides for Chanu Shushasana and we're going to give this heart another lift here so it's a wider Chanu Shushasana it's an open Chanu Shushasana left knee bent right leg straight hook your strap through the loop that's why we have loops for your right foot and your left hand inhale lift your left arm overhead and then exhale I want to find Positioning of the spine first, but the bending of the left elbow so much so you have a nice stretch through your left chest, <laughs> pecs. It's going to say lift as you stretch. And if you don't feel anything, get it tighter. You can move your neck however you please. Maybe you have to go into side stretch one more time, finding that length before you move back into this seated pec stretch. I'm getting it tighter here for the second round. And it's quite intense to open the structures around your lungs and you can intensify and relieve that by breathing deeply, bringing motion 
from your lungs into the structures from inside. So moving the ribs, moving the vertebra as you're stretching. Good. Switching sides. Lean forward for a moment to again widen your seat and if your lower back cannot be in a neutral position, I highly recommend you take a prop to sit a bit higher up. Hook your left foot, hook your right hand, inhale into the side stretch and then bend your elbow strap is behind you and lift your heart. You have to have a firm connection through the strap, firm resistance. And lift your heart as you breathe and expand through your right chest. Potentially getting it tighter. Yeah. Very good without shifting in your spine. That's a tricky one here. So ground through your hips. Lift through the heart. Find a position and then breathe into the chest. Expanding the breath from inside, spending at least five breaths here once you settled into your pose, feeling the expansion and the freedom that comes from connecting to whatever is, whatever is, maybe it feels open and comfortable, maybe it feels quite intense. Now here goes my favorite, seated Paschimottanasana. So you leave your left foot in, take your feet and legs parallel and loop the strap through the back of the pelvis. Now this is a perfect example how the strap is actually helping you as an assist. We often tend to go into Paschimottanasana not from a hip flexion but a lower back flexion. So in order to avoid that, the strap is there to remind you to Tilt your pelvis forward, lengthen the spine, and help you with a sense of grounding. You can use the block for your hips. Remember, Paschimottanasana is about a long spine, and what makes it so much nicer to feel that is to do it on our backs, which we'll do in a second, because you're ground to lift. And then we use the ground, the spine is already long. So keep the strap as it is, support your way back, lengthen your spine first, ground your thighs, bones, towards the neutral position of your low back, which means a lordotic curve. And then extend your legs up. Nice. Just enjoy gravity, bringing your legs closer as you actively extend. That's resistance stretching, right? As you actively lengthen, strengthen and stretching at the same time, your legs, your feet away from your pelvis. Get unhook your right foot and then loop your strap behind. Now I'm gonna lift up the strap a little bit so it's around my bottom ribs and then open your left leg to the side. You can support by holding the strap and keeping the right leg actively extending away from you. Good. With your breath, find that sense of lengthening and grounding into the earth. So you want to have as many bones as possible touching the ground, feeling an active grounding of your body into the mat. Come back, place your pelvis slightly to the left and let's go into Supta Pavrita Parangustasana. Placing the top end wherever you want, but what I like here is the strap going behind my ribs because it keeps me aware of breathing into that limited, restricted shape of the twist. Finding length through the body, turn your heads to your left and breathe, lowering down the outer hip. 
Slowly cooling down and settling the body. And I'm going to do the same on the second side. Coming back. Just loop your right foot on your back and unloop your left. And then extend your right leg up as you also extend your left leg. Good. <clears throat> Coming into the opening shape. And if you hit a wall, you hit a wall. It's actually kind of nice to use the wall as a resistance strategy to move your leg into. And therefore, root your pelvis, that wants to lift on your left side, more back. I love practicing close to walls and specifically using them, ideally on both sides. Extend your left leg and breathe all the way into the back of your neck. Take in the space of your body, expand your frame. Giving yourself room and decompression, physically, but also energetically, mentally. Finding the twist, shift your hips slightly to the left, adjust the strap and having it go through the bottom ribs is a nice way of connecting to the breath creating more diaphragmatic breath which is the breathing the motion in your lower ribs in this restricted form of the twist and if you manage to make restriction freer, we turning sour into sweet. That's such a powerful transformational aspect of this practice. Coming back to center. Hug your knees into the chest, ignore the strap for now, and just allow the thighs to ground. Going into Aponasana here, inhale, knees above the pelvis, and then exhale, bring your knees closer as you empty the breath without flattening your back. Nice and subtle pumps, just to connect to that prolonged exhalation through a little pressure on the lower abdomen, allowing the nervous system to fully settle. and restore. And with that sense of groundedness, place your feet, ground your thighs one more time, pushing with your hands, the upper thigh bone down away from your navel. And then extend one leg after the other. You can use your strap here to cover your eyes. It's super valuable to have your senses covered. Extend one leg after the other if you haven't yet. Press the palms against your eyes, the strap against your eyes, settle the eyeballs, settle the shoulders, and then extend your arms away from you. As you take your individual time for Shavasana and this beautiful resting position. Time to be reborn. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to move through a series of five classes with you or perhaps just one. Namaste.